everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nikki uh, from Edelweiss above the tree line. Um, thanks for uh, spending an hour with us today. We're going to be going through our Edelweiss community site um, and I'll be demoing um, for you the features of that. Um, and then at the end, if we have any questions, um, I can answer that as well. Um, my colleague Joe is going to be monitoring the chat during the demo. Um, and so he can kind of respond live to any questions or um, save them for the end if uh, they'd be a good thing to kind of demonstrate for everybody. Um, and a uh, quick note before we start, um, this webinar is being recorded and we are going to uh, post it to our summer sessions page where you registered for this session. Um, so if you have to duck out early or um, if you think any of your colleagues would benefit from it, you can uh, watch it again at a later time. Um, so uh, I guess to start off um, to talk about what is Edelweiss Community. Um, and it is kind of a uh, companion site to Edelweiss Plus. Um, it's a mobile friendly collaborative platform for book lovers who don't require the um, B2B functions or ordering features from Edelweiss Plus. Um, here users can join unique communities or groups of readers with similar interests. And on community, you can use a lot of the features of Edelweiss Plus. You can access and request review copies, manage your shelves and collections, write and read reviews. Um, and you can also collaborate with other community members on lists of titles and communicate with one another, which is something that uh, you cannot do in AWS Plus. Um, it's also organized differently um, than Plus because AWS Plus uh, is, you know, kind of optimized uh, for eventual ordering. Um, all, all the titles are as I'm sure many of you know, organized by catalog and publisher. Um, that's not the case in community. So it's a lot easier to discover new titles um, if you don't necessarily need them to be broken out in seasonal catalogs for ordering purposes. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen here to start demoing some stuff. And we are here. Okay, um, so we have our regular uh, Edelweiss page here. Um, I guess quick addition. Um, if you already have an Edelweiss Plus account, you should already have access to community. You don't need to sign up for anything additionally. Um, from your Edelweiss Plus account, you're just gonna wanna click this um, icon that looks like a snowflake. Um, it's actually a bunch of people putting their heads together. Um, to demonstrate collaboration. So you're just gonna wanna click that icon um, and that'll take you to the community site. Um, this is gonna be kind of your main dashboard homepage. Um, and like the homepage in Edelweiss Plus, it's pretty customizable depending on what you want to use this for. Um, your, if, you know, you ever want to go back to Edelweiss Plus, you can just click go back to Edelweiss Plus up here um, and that'll take you back there and you can switch back and forth however you need. Um, you don't need to like make a permanent decision on which site you want to use. Um, so up at your header here, you're going to have um, your search bar. Uh, it's kind of similar to the plus search bar, except that when you start um, typing in an author, a title or an ISBN, um, you're going to start getting um, kind of auto-populated um, options. And then from there, if you see the one that you're looking for, you can click it and that'll bring you to this title page. And I'll go back to all of that in a minute. <laughs> um, the next uh, icon is going to be your home button, which you know, wherever you are, if you just click home, it'll bring you back to this dashboard. Um, next is going to be your messages, which is uh, going to match your notifications in Edelweiss Plus. Um, but you will additionally have any messages from uh, 
folks in your communities um, because community has a messaging feature. So if you click on that, um, you'll be able to see your open messages. Um, and then up at the top here, you'll also be able to kind of narrow down um, if you wanna see, say like how many DRCs you've been accepted for, um, that'll show up here as like a DRC acceptance. You can click on that and just see those notifications. Um, and then for things like messages, you can click on the message to bring up the person um, and respond to them in the message center, which again, I'll go more in depth into um, in a minute. Um, and then your next icon is going to be your books. And these are any titles that you've interacted with um, either, either on Alice Plus or in community, whether you've shelved them, um, reviewed them, requested them, downloaded them. Um, so you're gonna have your shelves up first um, and you can, if there's ones you don't wanna look at, minimize and reopen these. Um, any DRC requests are gonna be here. Um, downloads you have are gonna be here. And then once you start submitting reviews, um, they'll show up here too. So all of the titles that you know, you've seen and previously um, done something with on Edelweiss are gonna show up there in a pretty easy place for you to find them all. Um, and then the next icon here we have is like, is your profile icon, um, kind of similar to the one in Edelweiss Plus. Um, if you'd like to view or edit your uh, profile, you can do that there. Um, you can also, um, click on your communication settings, which is going to bring up um, your email lists. So uh, if once you join a community, you may get um, newsletters from that community. If you'd like to unsubscribe from them, um, you can do that here and kind of manage that a little bit easier. Okay. Um, so going back to our home screen, um, uh, I'm just going to go through some of these lanes um, and widgets and kind of uh, show you about them. The first thing, the first main one is the uh, communities that you've joined, have been invited to, or how you can discover more communities. Um, and that's going to be um, up here on your top left. Um, your joined communities is going to be the, the first tab that pops up. Um, right now, my account has 14, and you can expand those um, as well. Uh, if you would like to see kind of general information about a community, you can click this um, information icon here, and that'll bring up um, the information. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is if um, you can also kind of see like general information kind of uh, um, about the access of the community here. Um, so for example, this fiction genre community, this is an Edelweiss maintained community. Um, and you can kind of see that icon here. If it's another user who created the community, you can see that here. Um, if it's a genre community, um, meaning that when you're in it, the titles are just gonna be, in this case, just fiction titles, um, you'll see this little kind of uh, comedy and tragedy um, sign here. That means it's filtered to a specific genre. Um, if you see an envelope icon, that means the community is invite only. So um, once I start showing uh, once I show you how to create a community, I'll show you how you can create a, a private invite only community. Um, if you see this key icon, that means it requires a valid ID to join the community. So for this one in particular, the American Booksellers Association, um, if you have an active um, ABA affiliate uh, key, um, ID, you can, you'll need to use that to join this one. Um, if you do get invited to any other communities um, that is going to show up on this tab. Um, again, you can kind of take a look at what the community is. And if you'd like to join it, just click this icon here. 
Um, so you can, uh, I don't know why I'm unable to join it right now, but if you normally, if you've been invited, you should be able to. Um, and then if you'd like to kind of search for a community that you might like to join, click on the more icon or the more tab. Um, the first thing that's going to come up are the genre communities. So these are going to be um, filtered to the categories. That, um, the books in them are only going to be those specific categories. So if we join this community um, and go into it, it's just going to be art and architecture books, etc. cetera. Um, the next one is uh, the communities that require a valid ID. Right now, the only ones um, we have there are ABA, Barnes and Noble, and Books a Million. If you have um, valid employee or affiliate IDs, you can join those communities there. Um, these are circles, which are kind of like mini communities within a community. I'll talk about that later. Um, and then other user created communities. These are groups that um, are created really by anybody. Um, and the ones you're going to see. Um, here are ones that you are going to have access to. Um, if it's a private community, you're not going to see it show up here unless you've been invited. But, um, you know, you can kind of search for um, a community you might like to join and join that there. Um, and then that'll um, come up as one of your joined communities there. Um, well, cool. so uh, the kind of next um, widget down here is a conversations widget. Um, I'll get into that once we create a community. Um, and oh, like kind of like I said, all of this stuff is pretty customizable on your dashboard. So if you are not really going to be interested in doing collaborative title lists or anything if you are just here to you know manage your review copies check out new buzz um, you can always drag these around um, so that the ones you want to see are right up at the top um, so since we're here um the new review copies is um just going to be as review copies are loaded to Adalice from publishers, um, those are going to show up here in um, the order that they were released. Um, if you want to, these are kind of like the most recent ones that have come up, but if you want to look at um, more, um, you can click browse by genre and, you know, click any of them there and it'll bring up a, a list of the most recent um, uploaded review copies for you to take a look at. So yeah, these are the most recent um, fiction um, category review copies. Um, here, so we have our collaborative title list that comes with um, after we create a community. Um, our next lane is our events lane. Um, Stores and libraries and other organizations um, have the ability to um, post their events um, on community to just get more eyes on them um, and also can attach links um, to register. Um, so if we look at the webinar we're in right now, um, if you click on one of those, it should give you some information um, about the event um, and then you can click either of these links um, and it should bring you to a registration page or more information about the event um, however the the store or the organization has um, loaded that um, if you are a store or a library or other organization that's interested in putting your events on community um, you can um, reach out to us and we'll get you set up there to start being able to do that. Um, so I'm not going to show you how to make an event today, but that is an option if that's something you're interested in. Um, our next lane here is our buzz lane. And so these are going to be organized by um, kind of the most activity on a book. Um, there, it's broken out into these four timeframes. Um, the 
kind of not yet published books up here. Um, these are books that are more than three months out. These are books that are gonna be published within the next three months. Um, and then newly published books within the last six months and um, new books published over six months ago. So if you're kind of looking for um, what's being kind of talked about the most, what's being reviewed the most, um, your, your buzz lane is going to be what you wanna look at there. Um, a couple of um, notes on these icons that you're gonna see um, on all the, all the titles that um, have DRCs, um, or even not actually in this case. Um, this uh, hand raising hand icon means that the uh, title is available for request and you can submit a request um, for the title the same way you would in Adelice. The request goes to the publisher who will either um, approve or decline that. Um, titles that are uh, available for you to download immediately will have this um, cloud with an arrow icon and you can click that um, to download in whichever formats are available there. Um, if you see a download icon with a check mark, that means you have downloaded the title. Um, you can hover over it to see the date that you downloaded it. Um, the the e-reader icon means that the book is available in our in-browser e-reader. Um, so that means you don't have to download it to a third party. Um, if it's available for you to download, you can open it in your browser and start reading it right away. Um, and then these numbers down here are kind of the average um, and number of ratings for the titles. So the um, icon on the left is going to be the average um, rating of the title uh, between one and 10. And then the um, next icon is going to be the number of reviews. Um, and so kind of the order of these is going to be kind of a, a mashup between the average rating and the number of reviews. Um, if you would like to see these more in depth rather than just kind of the, um, I don't know, 20 or so that you're getting in this scroll, um, you can click this arrow to see all and it'll bring up your buzz page. Mm -hmm. um, so this will give you kind of a more like grid view of the titles that are being buzzed about. Um, from here too, you can kind of apply different filters um, that you'd like. Um, you can filter them by uh, any, any of the filters you'd be able to use in Adelice Plus. So by imprint, um, format, category, et cetera. Um, you can see which ones are available for you to download or request. Um, if that's something you're interested in, um, you can uh, for you can filter by publish date range. So if you want to look at titles that are not out yet, um, you can include coming out more than three months and within three months, um, and that'll kind of filter that there. Um, from here, you can also um, export um, this list to a file to um, a collection or to a shelf. Um, so you would want to, once you've kind of have it filtered down how you want, um, you can hover over action all titles. Um, you can add them to a collaborative list, which is gonna be a title list within community itself. You can add it to a shelf or collection. So any of the um, preset shelves that are in Edelweiss, or you can create um, a collection. Um, to add them to, and that'll be also available to you in Adelice Plus. So if you're kind of looking at some of this information for ordering purposes, you can add it to a collection, go back into Adelice Plus and um, create an order from it there. Um, and you can also share or export this list um, if, you know, for really whatever you need it for. Um, you can export it to a PowerPoint or an Excel file. Um, 
if you want these lists of ISBNs, if you want to make sure they're in your POS, um, you can export them to an Excel file and then import those into your POS system so that you have them when you know, you're ready to order or receive them. Um, so that's a cool feature. Um, if we go back to our homepage, um, our, um, our next lane down here is gonna be your review copies. Um, again, you can see those from your books um, icon here. If you click on that, that's included there. But if you just wanna see your review copies, um, you can see what you're reading. So that would be the titles you've downloaded um, so far, but haven't posted a review on. Um, once you do post a review, they'll go to this reviewed tab, which right now we don't have anything in. Um, if you have any requests that shows up here. Um, and then if you have a request that has expired or, um, or if, I'm sorry, not a request, if the DRC is expired, um, that'll show up here. Um, and then our last lane down here is our shelves and collections. So um, what we saw from the list view before, we have our kind of uh, our preset shelves here. Um, and then any collections you have would show up here. And so for example, if we click on our favorite shelf that opens uh, this, which will show us all of the, um, the titles we have in that, um, sorry, in that shelf. Um, and again, you can, you, you know, be able to request or download a DRC. Um, and then you can also view those in a list, which, there we go. Um, if you wanted to export it or just kind of see all of the title information um, in one go. Okay, so um, the kind of first thing that's kind of your general homepage. Um, the first thing we're going to do is create a new community. Um, and again, anybody can create a community in Edelweiss. Um, you can set it to be open access or private, um, depending on what you want it for. So if you are, um, if you want to kind of have conversations with um, people who are in a book club with you, Let's say you might want it to be private, just have it limited to those people who are in your book club. If you're looking to connect more with other readers who you don't know, you might want to make it open access. Um, so to do that, what you're going to want to do is click this plus icon on this top left widget, um, which will allow you to create your new community. Um, so and what you're going to want to do um, is uh, name it. So I'm going to call it our book club and then um, just kind of a brief description of either if you have open access, like what your um, community is going to be focused on, or if it's a private community, um, you know, you can just put in kind of whatever you want. Um, for who can create title lists, um, depending on how you want to use the community, you can set it to anyone, which means any member of the group can create a title list or only admins, which uh, would normally just mean you, the creator of the group can create title lists. Or if you don't want to use title lists at all, you can click none. Um, and so that kind of gives you a level of control there. And then this next option is if an individual joins, include all the members of that individual's Edelweiss account. So if this is off, it's just a user community. Um, people would be invited or join one by one. If you toggle it to on, um, that means anybody you invite, you're also inviting members of their organization. So if we were making a community for the New York Public Library, um, and we invited one librarian. If um, once we invite them, we're also inviting all other librarians in the New York Public Library system. So again, that's really up to you um, whether you want it to just be individuals or by organization. So we're going to leave this off for right now. Um, but once you have that, you can submit, and that will. 
create your community. So um, we have our basic information here. Um, right now, since we set it to user, I'm the only member in it. Um, so we have one current member. Um, if you would like to upload a picture, um, you can just hover over the, the community icon to upload a photo for your community. Um, if you need to edit the, the title or information name, you can do that here. Um, or if you kind of messed up with it or want to start from scratch, you can also delete it from there. Um, if you are making a community for um, kind of more specific things, let's say your book club only focuses on a particular genre, um, you can set filters for this group so that the only kind of titles you'll see come up in it are those that fit that category. Um, so you'll click edit here. Um, and the categories are going to be by BISAC code. So um, kind of depending on what you're looking for will depend what you pick. Um, for a, a book club, you know, you might want to expand the fiction section and kind of look for, you know, what you're looking for um, here. Let's make it a horror book club because that sounds fun. Um, and then click save. Um, another uh, attribute you can set to is imprint. Um, so if um, you are just look, if you just want to see titles from a specific publisher, um, you can put that here too. So, um, and they're going to be in alphabetical order. So um, let's say that uh, Macmillan is our imprint. Um, and we can click save. Um, and then below that, we have our access. So right now it's set to open access. Um, all new communities will default to open access. And the way to make them closed um, is just by adding a member. If you don't specifically add any members, it'll stay open. Um, and anybody going to the community site can find the community and join and participate. Um, but if you want it to be a closed community, you can click add new and you can search for accounts in a, a number of different ways. Um, you can search a person's name if you want. So my colleague, Joe, who's on, um, let's put him in this community. I think Joe has a lot of accounts, so there we go. Um, so we'll add him there. Um, we see that he's added. Um, you can also add an entire account. So kind of like I was saying before, if you are making a community just for um, like a New York Public Library account, um, you can search that. Um, there's a lot of New York Public Library accounts, but you can add all of those there and that will set that will um, enable any of those account users to find that community. Um, the easiest thing for you to do if, um, you know, depending on uh, whether folks have Adelice accounts already or not, might just be to um, add them, add their email. Um, and you can do that here. It would help if I could spell my own email address. Okay. Um, and you can copy and paste emails in here too. You don't have to type out everyone. Um, so then if we exit out of that, we can um, see who we have invited um, so far. Oh, I just invited myself. Okay, well, that works. Um, so um, you can see who you have invited and whether or not they've joined. Um, if you would like to revoke their invitation, you can click the X um, and then that'll kick them out. <laughs> um, and um, if you would like to notify these folks that they've been invited, um, you can send an invite to them. So um, right now we've just put Joe in here, but you can um, click them. You can see if you've already previously sent an invite to them um, and you can send them a notification and that'll get sent to them so they know to join the group. Um, 
So now our group is a private group. It can only be found and accessed by the people who you have added here. Um, and you can see that um, if we go back to our homepage, um, the, the group we just made shows up here. Um, it has our, our genre masks um, showing that it's been filtered to a specific genre. And it has this envelope icon, which means it's invite only. Um, and again, if you ever need to edit it, uh, if you're the admin of a group, you can edit it there. Um, so, you know, if you don't wanna, let's say you don't wanna have this imprint on it anymore, you can remove that and save it. And that will be all set for your group. All right, so once we go into our group, um, the kind of main page looks similarly to um, our dashboard. Right now we haven't really kind of added anything, so um, those will kind of come up um, as they go. Um, uh, let's see, first thing, okay, yeah. First thing we're gonna wanna do um, is create a collaborative title list to kind of start things going. Um, and you can do that by clicking the add new to the right of that lane. Um, and so a collaborative title list, again, you can really make it anything you want. Um, if uh, I know there are some bookstores who have kind of their own communities here with their booksellers, um, you can make a collaborative list of um, upcoming displays uh, you wanna do, or um, if there is a specific month that's coming up, you can put books in here for specific months. You can make a staff pick collaborative list. Um, if you have a book club at your store, you can make a book club list. Um, so since this is a book club, um, I'm going to make this list a what should we read next um, list. You can put a description if you want, but you don't have to. Um, the list is going to remain in a draft mode unless you toggle this on to publish. So we'll just do that. And then again, um, if you want anyone to be able to add titles to the list, you can keep it on all. Um, if you just, you know, if you wanna kind of control the list more, um, you're the only one who can um, add titles. You can put only admins um, or I don't know why you would pick none if you're making a title list, but you can also do that. Um, you can also uh, click quantity inputs. You can have that toggled on or off. Um, this would probably be most useful if you are kind of collaborating with um, other colleagues on, um, on buying or on, um, I don't know, ordering anything like that. Um, you're not going to be able to order from community, but you can put in quantity inputs that other people can see and then those folks would you know know whether they should buy it or not um sorry that was a kind of roundabout way of saying it one example could be if you have a staff pick um list if you have a bookseller putting in a title for a, a specific staff pick they could put in a quantity input for how much they think you should order um to you know, be able to display their staff pick well. So once we have that, we'll submit. Um, and the list is gonna show up here. Um, from your collaborative title lists, um, you, if you have more than one list, you can search for them and there will be kind of a page um, delineation here. Um, you can pin the list so that uh, even if folks are adding new lists, this one will always stay at the top for you. Um, if you're, if you don't need the list anymore, you can archive it. Um, and then from here, you can just see, um, like who created the list and then the last activity. Um, so if we go in here right now, it's going to look very blank, but the first thing you're going to want to do is add titles to the list. Um, and you can do that by clicking add titles. You can search, um, at the top for titles you're looking for and um, same as the, the general search, um, they will auto-populate and you can click on them 
Um, and that's kind of how you would want to add them one by one. If you have a larger list um, that you're looking or that you'd like to add, you can just um, copy and paste the ISBNs there and they will populate there. So now we have a couple of books in our list. Um, you'll see kind of a running tally of them up here um, as more get added. Um, you can see who they were added by here and when. Um, and then here would be kind of where you would interact with the titles. So um, one thing you can do in here um, is upvote and downvote titles. That's kind of like a, a like or dislike function. Um, and you can, you know, kind of use that however you'd like. Um, for actually our company book club, we use the upvote, downvote to decide what we're going to read next in the book club. So, um, you know, whoever gets the most upvotes, that's the next book we read. Um, so to do that, you're just going to want to click the up arrow here. Um, and that will move it to the top of the list here. Um, this number will show kind of the running total um, of how many votes it receives. Um, and so, you know, you can kind of keep track of them that way. Um, if you want to start a conversation about one of these titles, um, you can click this or a comment on the title. Um, you can click the um, little speech bubble icon. Um, and put that there. Um, and as we're doing this, um, these icons show up here um, to show you kind of how many, um, how much interaction the book's having. <laughs> it looks like Joe is interacting with it as we speak. So now it has two upvotes. Um, and you can click on any of those to see, you know, who's done what. Um, and then if you have the quantity input, um, you can do that here. Um, and if you want a description of why you're <laughs> um, putting a quantity there, you can do that. There we go. Oh, I added two, just kidding. Let's get rid of this one. And there. Okay, so, um, and that shows up here and you can see why and when they posted that. Um, if you wanna start a conversation on a title, um, if you, this is, uh, I'm gonna keep going with the book club example. Um, if this is a book club book, um, you know, if you wanna kind of start conversations with people before you actually have your meeting, um, you can um, comment on, any of the titles, um, and you can do that with any, really any title um, you find. Um, to, I guess, probably I should have mentioned right off the bat, to see more information on any title, you're just gonna wanna click on the name. Um, it'll bring up the general kind of uh, information of the book itself, um, the summary, if there are any images, those will come up. Um, you can see, you know, the author bio, quotes, marketing plans, kind of the basic stuff you'd see in uh, a catalog listing in Edelweiss. And then you can also interact with the title however you'd like. So um, you can place a title on your shelf and see where you've put it before. Um, so right now we don't have this in any of our collections, but we do have it in three collaborative lists. Um, and if you click on that, that'll also bring up kind of these other communities that you're in. Um, and you can, so you can see the list that the title is on and you can also add them to any other list that you are authorized to add them to. Um, and then if you wanna place it on the shelf, you can put it on any of these shelves or if you have any collections, you can add it to a collection there. Um, here's where you'll see any conversations um, about the book. Um, so right now it has no active conversations, but you can start a conversation in either this uh, or another community. Um, you just wanna click on the community, um, click down here on new thought, 
um, and you can comment on it. Um, one kind of cool thing you can do here is you can kind of uh, tag a title. So if you're starting a conversation that's not necessarily from a specific title, um, you can still link it to that um, by uh, typing in at and then um, searching for the title you want. And that will click send. We'll add that there. Um, so you can see the conversation has been started here. And then there's a hyperlink to bring you to the books page. Um, so that's, I don't know, I think that's a really cool kind of um, cross reference thing. You can go right to the book you're looking for um, and search it there. Um, and then folks can reply to it as well. Um, another thing you can do right from a title's information page is write a review and nominate it and read any community reviews. Um, so uh, if you'd like to write a review of the book, um, you can much love it the same way you would on Edelweiss Plus, or you can open the review drawer, um, which will bring you through, you know, your overall rating, however you want to rate it, you can write your review here. And then you can choose who you want to share it with. So um, if you want to share it with all the communities you're in, as well as um, your friends and any publisher contacts and colleagues that you have, just keep everything checked. Um, if you'd like to kind of choose who you want to send it to, um, you can just click, let's say, the one community um, and then save it. Um, from there, you'll also be able to kind of, if you'd like, you could link it to one of your um, social media platforms, or you could nominate the title for anything you're able to nominate for. Um, you can also just nominate the title by um, clicking there. Um, so because we're in kind of this community that kind of has no, uh, no other reviews or anything, um, no community reviews are coming up right now, um, but if we were just going to go to the regular title page, um, we'll, that'll bring up uh, community reviews from other people who are in all of your other communities, if that makes sense. So depending on kind of where you open the title uh, might influence the amount of reviews you're seeing. Um, but there you can also expand them um, to read the reviews. Uh, not gonna, because I don't know if people want um, their reviews on this webinar, and that's fine. Um, so that's kind of how you would interact with the title there. And then uh, once you do, um, if you post a review or anything like that, um, that book will show up in if you click my books in your reviews um, lane here. Um, okay, so that's kind of, oh, another kind of um, cool thing you can do from any of these title lists. If, um, um, let's say you're like looking at another community's lists, um, if um, I know like the ABA posts uh, their Indie Next lists, um, if you want to kind of add that to a collection for yourself um, or anything, you can also do that. Um, for that, you're going to want to flip to standard mode here, which brings up this in a more grid format um, and sort of what we kind of looked at before. Um, you can action all of these titles to export them, add them to a collection, um, add them to a collaborative list. Um, and so, you know, that's a, a good way for title discovery and for um, kind of sharing upcoming titles with uh, colleagues if, you, if you're part of a collaborative list there. Um, you can also um, manage your notifications for these lists. Um, so you can get a notification when there's been sort of any interaction, um, whether a title's been added or removed, votes commented on, 
um, et cetera there. Um, again, if you're done with this list, um, if it was kind of a, a time lock sort of thing, um, you don't need to use it anymore, you can archive it and that'll kind of get it out of your way. Um, and then if you need to edit uh, any of the information, um, you can do that there. Um, let's see what we have next up. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a good, oh, um, I guess I said I'd go back to this on our, oops. All right, went back to Adelweiss Plus, but I can go right back to community, so that's fine. Um, so uh, on our homepage here, um, since we kind of started that conversation on that one book, um, we'll see that come up here, um, but you can also see other conversations that have been started um, in your other joined communities. Um, and so to uh, join or to comment on that, you can click on it, you can see what's been said, you can um, reply and um, interact with folks there. Um, let's see. Oh, um, also on your homepage, you can kind of, um, you can get titles based on your saved filters. So any saved filters you've previously made in Adelweiss Plus, or you can create a new saved filter um, right from here. You can click on that and that'll give you a list of titles that fit that category. Um, so that's a, if you use save filters for title discovery already in Adelweiss, you can still use that here. Um, and then you can also, if you have uh, catalogs or collections, um, you can do that as well. So um, if you do want to search things by catalog, you can bring up them here. There's going to be a lot of those. So um, any publisher catalogs you can search for and bring up there and that'll show you what's in there um, as well. Um, let's see. I guess I can actually, that took a longer than probably expected. Um, if um, we've got like 10-ish minutes, um, but let me check the chat here. Um, so I'm not seeing any questions so far, but if anyone does, um, please let me know and drop them in the chat and um, I can answer those. Um, a, again, if you're um, like communities are really <laughs> a great place for um, folks who are just looking for new titles or looking for um, DRCs to download. Um, and anybody can use community. You don't have to um, be a reviewer or you know anything like that. Um, it's really great for um, booksellers who are not buyers necessarily um, because they can still um, discover titles, uh, request review copies, things like that, um, but won't need to get bogged down with all of the kind of um, ordering capabilities. Um, and community is also mobile friendly. So if you're using it for DRCs on your e-reader device, um, it's an easier way to do that as opposed to the ordering functions, which um, kind of require a desktop. Um, oh, the chat is disabled. Why would that be? Oh, okay. I think I just enabled it. I'm very sorry about that. Um, but I think I enabled it. So um, if uh, anyone wants to drop a chat, um, that would be great. Otherwise, um, I'll put our, our email address in the chat. Um, you can always email us at support at above the tree .com with any questions. Um, we do have our sort of help widget here. If you're, um, if you have any questions, um, you can search for a help document there or, um, and you know, you'll get instructions on how to do that. Um, or again, you can always email us and we're happy to answer any questions. Um, let's see. Let's 
Yeah. Um, I feel like that was pretty much everything. Um, but yeah, um, I, so I guess if, if there are no questions, we can um, end. Um, thank you everybody for coming to this. I do apologize that the chat was disabled um, throughout it. I didn't realize that was the case. Um, and yeah, the recording will be available at our summer sessions um, and as well as our future summer sessions, please feel free uh, to register for whatever you'd like or watch any of our past ones. Um, and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.